Hey guys, just wanted to do a review on the Harbor Freight 29 gallon belt driven uh, 6.4 CFM at 90 compressor. So I've had this for about uh, six months now, made a couple upgrades, and I gotta tell you, $329, ridiculously good. Okay, here's what's going on here. I'll just kind of walk you through all the upgrades the first thing is i cut a hole here reason is this drain plug is ridiculously recessed just kind of a, a weird thing it really needs to be longer um the reason i did it like this is now i can if you can see that now i can squeeze that in there and change the oil better so Basically drilled it here, grinded that out uh, after taking this off. But anyway, wanted to do that. When you change the oil, it's gonna make a mess. So if you got plenty of brake cleaner, I mean, throw a towel under it and you're good. Second thing is, added a drain. So, much easier to reach. It comes with a very cheap drain plug. Uh, mine was actually broken when I got it or it broke while I was taking it out. So anyway, all you need is a right angle, some tube and a valve. Okay. Third thing is this guy. Okay. Let me turn this around. Okay. So this is an after cooler. If you don't know, the way compressors work, right, they take air, which I also drilled a couple holes, ventilation. They pull air here, they compress it, goes through here. They got this tiny little cooler here. Uh, and then basically the way it comes stock is it goes from here directly into your tank, directly here. So it goes from here directly there now if you measure this with an infrared thermometer temper temperature gauge thermometer it's about 300 degrees okay and when you take air that's coming in that's already humid uh, you heat it to 300 degrees you compress it inside of a tank when you drain it you're gonna have a lot of water come out I gotta tell you guys I have never had a drop of water come out on that. And I got this in July, okay? So I ran it through the summer. Now it's winter, it's February 12th today. About 30 degrees outside, about 40, 50, it's about 60 degrees in the garage at all times. Never had a drop of water come out of that, okay? Here's how I set up my after cooler. By the way, a friend gave me this, he had it in his garage. There are a couple links that you can uh, get these from, from like Jags online. Basically, you just want an after cooler for like a radiator or an aftermarket that's going to have 3 8 pipe thread here. Okay, so let me turn this and show you what I did. All right, good enough. So it's mounted right onto the belt cage. I put some rubber grommets there. Doesn't make a noise. Perfect. Okay, first thing you're going to need, uh, this is a half to 3 8 uh, adapter all right that's important then i've got this is actually a pressure washer line for my local pressure washer place uh it's good for like 2000 degrees three eighths real strong that's that's what you want so that goes right here thread that put it under here that comes out here you tracking then it goes up to the top okay this is a swivel fitting because these are crimped on, so you can't twist that end and twist that end. So you need a swivel fitting. This is like an air one from Home Depot. This is a another adapter. I think 3 eighths to 5 eighths. That's probably what that is. I believe so. Okay. Then we come out. So what this does, it goes back and forth or up and down. And it comes out here. Again, 5 eighths pipe thread to 3 eighths. Okay, I got a short little thing here. This is a floating 
float valve. So this does leak sometimes. Uh, there's water in there right now. I, I think I've seen it leak before. Basically, it, and I want to keep this as basic as possible, guys. I'm not an expert, but I got this thing set up for about $300, and it is dry, dry air, okay? So let's just walk through how this works. And radiators in your car do the same thing. They take coolant that's hot from your engine block and engine head, cooling your engine. It heats up that coolant. Now, it goes through these fins in this radiator, back and forth, back and forth. This is aluminum and this will cool it. The aluminum will absorb all the heat and leave it out here cold. You cannot hold this when this compressor is running, even for two, three minutes. You can touch this all you want when it's done, okay? The other thing is this fan, the, because this is a belt-driven model, two horsepower belt-driven, goes right into 120 volt. This fan actually helps cool this as well. So, Pretty nice. It doesn't, I mean, it blows air this way, blowing the head. Some people add an extra fan. I've even thought of putting a fan there to blow on it, but it works just fine. Okay, so anyway, after it zigzags and loses all the heat, it comes in here. Then I got something going on here, just a pipe, pipe, and then it's going into the, the actual tank, okay? Now, I was gonna mention, there's a few different ways to get compressed air. Most people, I'd say 90% of people with compressors, they will leave this part stock. They will not do an after cooler between the head and the tank. So they'll put that 300 degree air straight down into the tank, guys. And then usually those big compressors, they'll have the outlet on the side. You know, I'm talking 60 or 80 gallons. They have the outlet here. They'll bring it over. They'll get a $1,000 uh, condensed air dryer. Okay, or they'll get a huge desiccant air dryer. Um, I gotta tell you guys, you're gonna get a lot of water in your uh, compressor if you do that. That leads to rust. It just, it doesn't make sense. If you can throw an after cooler on there, then, I mean, you don't even have to do this one. They've got other after coolers that work as well. So, this is just what I... This is, honestly, it's perfect. I'm not going to have a $3,000 compressor. And the one it comes with, this is a joke. This doesn't do anything. I mean, it's too close, too small. It just doesn't do anything. Um, the other thing is I haven't noticed a loss of, of airflow. Now, the second, uh, well, the second big change that I did to this, besides adding that after cooler and plumbing it back in here, is you might notice this is kind of weird. This could use some upgrading. I honestly want this to go from this to 3 eighths, change my pressure switch, change my gauge. This regulator, you don't use that, could probably even take it off. Um, so this stuff's all quarter inch, okay? The reason uh, you see this here, so I went ahead and added an extra 20 gallon tank. I just had this sitting around, I think I got it a while ago, on Facebook for 10 bucks, okay? Uh, I wanted some more air capacity. So what I have is I have it, let me move this back. Now, there are two ways to do this. If you wanna add this auxiliary tank, um, and I have it one way and you could have it another way. So the way I have it, I'll just explain that. Outlet from the tank goes two places. First place it goes is into this tank. Second place it goes over here is up here into my filter regulator. This red one is from the 20 gallon tank. So what I did is I put both outlets going into that filter uh, regulator just so that I have maximum flow. If I had these a little more efficiently plumbed, I could just uh, basically go just out of here and I could cut this one off. So I could go from here to here to just one out. But I haven't done that, I might do that. This works fine. Uh, it's got a tiny little filter on that one. You know, don't really need that. This one I also have this extender, drain valve extender. Guys, these are easy. You don't need to be digging under there. To, to shut, to, to open your drain. 
plumb them out. It's too simple not to. Uh, but anyway, moving forward, this fits perfectly right under my little makeshift bench once I get that back in there. Okay, there's that. These two ends go here, okay? The tank's low, but when it's not, this is regulated to 100. It's a filter there, Harbor Freight, okay? Then from there, um, it's just going to my hose reel. Now, I wanted to do something. My garage is 18 by 20, 360 square feet. Here's how loud the compressor is. about 25 feet away from that. So, the one thing I will say is this release valve, it is longer because of all the air stuck in here. Okay, so it is longer, that's one thing. Now, as far as upgrades go, to get past this, and again, you may or may not want this tank. I've even seen people put two of these compressors together, two separate breakers powering them, have one outlet here, one outlet on the other tank, combining them really like this, okay, like a T or a Y connection basically, to one outlet, and then putting that on a reel. Now this is 6.4 CFM at 90. The other one would be 6.4 CFM at 90. If you combine those and put them to one flow, just like something like this, you're gonna have 12.8 CFM on your best situations. You're at least gonna have 10, okay? And you're gonna have 60 gallons of storage for $660. I bought this for 330. So if you do need a lot of air, and you don't have $1,500 for a Quincy or whatever, you can put two of them together. You can do a modified version of this, really just a Y connection, a, a T connection to put two to one. Go ahead and filter that. You, you even want a, an after cooler on both, you know, if you want to go overboard. I didn't want to deal with any water in my airlines. And like I said, I have never gotten water out of that. But as a secondary option, you could have two of them. I might. Because uh, also they're pretty low profile. I mean, if you got a space like this, pretty cool. But anyway, besides that, the only real upgrade I'd rather, I'd rather have is a Flexzilla more flexible hose. So I've got this I've got this 3 8 from Harbor Freight right now and it's just giant, uh, hard to maneuver. Um, I know Flexzilla has a really nice 3 8 So I'm going to put some links to uh, an after cooler that I found uh, from Jegs. They'll work fine the Flexzilla hose that I would recommend because I've used it. <coughs> um, better than the Harbor Freight one. And yeah, that's about it. If you have any questions, go ahead and comment. I'll try my best to get to it. But really guys, if you have a budget uh, compressor build for $329, which I got this on sale for, which is pretty normal for them, you cannot find a better one that's between 5.9 and 6.4 CFM. You cannot find a better compressor for about $300. They're typically gonna be about five or 600. Now, the reason why this is so much better than the 21 gallon Harbor Freight, which I'm gonna cut a video to in a second, that one is definitely loud, definitely loud. It's crazy loud, you can't, <laughs> you can't do anything when that thing's on.
Um, <laughs> it's basically a disposable compressor. You think of those like $20 to $30 printers where you just buy one and it uses, works for a couple months. That's basically what it is because you can't really replace any of the parts in there. So if the piston inside seizes up, if the head gets warped, anything happens to it, you basically are lost and it's 150 bucks. So unless you get the warranty and you want to keep replacing them uh, for free, and the warranty is going to be like 50 bucks anyway, so that's going to be $200. Don't get the 21 gallon. Get the 29 gallon. It's way quieter. It has way more flow. The 29, the 21 gallon, the cheap one, says it does like 4.7 CFM, and it says it's two and a half horsepower, but I can tell you it's more like four CFM at 90, and it's more like one and a half horsepower. It sucks. This belt-driven system is much more efficient. It's much quieter, and every piece here you can get replaced. If you need to buy just this, you can buy just that. If you need a new belt, if you need a new flywheel, if you need a new connection here out of the out of the tank, anything you can buy it. So I will say there is no better compressor for the money for three twenty nine. You can even get fancy and put two of them, 660 and tw over 12 CFM and 60 gallons of storage, guys, is unbeatable. Again, if you buy one 60 gallon, you're going to take up that much space. It's going to be at least eight, dollars $900 for anything decent. And yeah, that's really it. I mean, there's nothing wrong with those big ones. It's just this is good and it works great. So I run air tools on this. I've run uh, paint guns on it, uh, uh, pneumatic polishers, uh, so much stuff. So that's really why I wanted to make this video is I researched for quite a while to find what after cooler I could use. And then a friend had one uh, to find how to do this. So I didn't get this sopping wet air, you know, where I'm having to drain this all the time. But now that I added the after cooler, uh, it, it does not ever, you know, drain any water. Before I added the after cooler, yeah, if I wanted to fill this thing up, and again, that was in July, August, uh, before I added it. I think I had it for like two weeks before I finalized that. But yeah, it, it sprayed water all over the place. So it's, you know, it is a huge improvement. But anyway, I didn't want to make this too long. Again, I'll try and post some links, but I highly recommend the compressor. I highly recommend go ahead and mounting it up. But even just stock, it's fine. Just know you're going to have some air or some, uh, some moisture. So, yeah, that's it. Sorry to take longer. Try to do this as fast as possible. But it is a lot of information. Again, I will be upgrading this a little bit. This is kind of ugly. Uh, so don't even mention that, you know. This all needs, uh, you know, organized, fixed up. And then I do want a better hose rather than the Harbor Freight because... I don't know. I just want a flexilla hose. It's much more flexible and higher quality. Other than that, after cooler works great. Compressor's fantastic. I love it.